I think that's fine. All right, well, we're happy to have uh, Javier Amayana uh, from Madrid back to see us. Uh -huh. to talk about the utilization of automorphic groups of learning languages. Well, thanks very much. Thanks, Chris, for inviting me and all the hospitality. Uh, maybe I thought, uh, given that I'm on camera, I should start by cracking up a couple of jokes, but uh, <laughs> may maybe not. So, so let me say, uh, um, <coughs> this is joint work with uh, Conchita Martinez, who, for those of you tennis fans, she is not the person who won Wimbledon. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, so she's from Saigos in Spain also. And uh, so I want to tell you something about automorphism groups of right angle darting groups and, you know, their avilianization. But uh, also I want to advertise a little bit for this class of relatively, um, well, maybe not new, but uh, um, yeah, let's say new. Uh, class of groups so that have received more attention lately than, uh, than before. So let's see. So what is the setup? So the setup is gamma will be a finite graph. <coughs> simplicial. Okay? Finite simpl simplicial graph. <coughs> and I'm going to form a group out of this. So that's that's called the right angle darting group associated to gamma. A gamma will have, um, it's given by the following presentation. So uh, the generators are the vertices. So I'll denote that by V of gamma. And I, the only relations are commutativity relations. So I declare that V and W uh, commute. Uh, if and only if um, V and W is an edge. Okay, so, so let's see some examples. <coughs> so that motivate, actually it's the examples that motivate why um, studying these well, groups is, well, gives a lot of motivation for why one should study this class of groups. So if gamma is totally disconnected, so just a bunch of vertices, let's say n of them, then um, a gamma is the free group on n generators. And <coughs> um, if gamma is the complete graph so on n vertices, um, complete means every vertex is joined to any other, then it's adjacent to any other, then a gamma is z to the n. So these groups, in some sense, interpolate between the two, the two extreme cases of the free group and the free abelian group. Um, let's say, um, let's give a, a less trivial example, a, b, c, d. Uh, this is gamma. Um, <coughs> so what is this? This is, here's a free group. Here's another one. And they both commute. So A gamma is free on uh, A, B cross a free group on C, D. <coughs> More generally, um, if gamma is a complete bipartite graph, meaning that there are black and white vertices and every black is joined to every white, and no blacks and no whites are joined, uh, then uh, A gamma is a free white feedback. <coughs> okay, so yeah, so so let's look at automorphisms of this um, of right angled arting groups. So I look at A odd of A gamma 
So again, it interpolates between you know, the two extreme cases of odd fn, which is a very interesting class of groups, and then uh, g, l, and z, so, yeah, corresponding to these two cases respectively. And you know, given that this group here is a cousin of the mapping class group, then you know, this has a lot of analogies with a lot of groups that we care about. So <coughs> the problem is that you know, talking about this group like that, uh, it's not very, I mean, let's, let's try to get some understanding of what this group looks like apart from a, so let's look at some examples of automorphisms, uh, types. There's an obvious type, so, so these are called graphic automorphisms um, of autos. Graphic meaning that, means that every symmetry of the graph will induce an automorphism of the group. Um, then continuing with the obvious um, list of uh, automorphisms, there's, we can also invert a vertex. So this is given v a vertex. Uh, I v is the vertex that is the automorphism that sends v to v minus one and fixes uh, everything else. Well, apart from v minus 1. But, you know. um, OK, so what else? So that's not very interesting. So there's a, the, the first more interesting class of groups, uh, automorphisms, are called transvections. So these are the analogs of Dane twists. Um, <coughs> so let's suppose that I give you um, let, um, what did I call it so that I don't make a mess? Um, <coughs> Let V and W be vertices and define the transvection given by V and W. The order is important, is the uh, uh, automorphism that sends V to V, W and fixes everything else. Okay? But there is a problem. Okay, there is a problem. But this is not always defined. Okay, this it's auto not always an automorphism. Yeah, yeah. well, uh, so given that, yeah. It's not always an automorphism. So what is the problem here? Let's suppose, uh, so this is, uh, yeah, okay. As Ilya says, not always an auto. So well, what's, what's going on? So let's, uh, let's suppose that I give you a vertex u that is adjacent to v. So this is the link, set of vertices adjacent to u. So let's, and uh, let, let me call this t, just for short. <coughs> so t of u v um, that is u v w. Okay, so it doesn't do anything to u and v goes to vw, but this is also uh, because they commute. So this is the same as t vu, and this is uh, v w u, and this commuted. So this is the same as v u w. Okay, I love algebra. Uh, so this and that have to be the same, which means that u and w have to commute. So we need that u is adjacent to w, maybe equal to w. So let's say u is in the star of w. This is the link union. So the star is w union the link. So, so this is um, so this is so the upshot is that T exists 
So this is not exists, meaning that it's an element of the automorphism group. If and only if um, the link of V is contained in the star of W. Everything that is adjacent to V is adjacent to W. Okay? Um, and we will write to mean this we'll write v less than or equal to w. And we will talk about this uh, relation a lot. <coughs> Questions? No? Um, so that's a third class of automorphisms. Um, <coughs> What's well, a fourth type of automorphism? Um, I can conjugate a bit of a bunch of generators by um, so this is called a partial conjugation so I can take uh, so I can take um, let uh, I don't know V uh, be a vertex and Y a connected component of gamma minus the star. Okay, so what do you call it? V. So I take the star, I remove it, I take a connected component, and I'm going to conjugate all the elements of Y by V. So the partial conjugation given by V conjugating the connected component y, you need, to, you need to conjugate the full connected component for a similar reason to that. Okay, so otherwise it won't be an automorphism. So you need, yeah. Um, <coughs> this conjugates w to v minus 1 um, uh, um, if um, w belongs to y and fixes everything else. Okay. So why am I giving so many examples of uh, automorphisms? Well, because I've given you, I've just given you a generating set for alt a gamma. Okay. So alt a gamma. So this is a theorem of um, Lorentz or Lorentz. I don't know. In '95, and Servatius, Servatius. I don't know. '89. Uh, so he proved it in uh, some cases, and then he proved it in full generality, that odd a gamma is generated by these four types of automorphisms. <coughs> okay? And in fact, not only that, but uh, so these groups are finally presented and a presentation is known and this is a, a very nice result of well, Matt Day, it's Matt Day's thesis um, uh, so maybe oh, a gamma finally presented but I mean that's not the theorem, you know? the theorem is that he gives a presentation okay? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's peak peak reduction. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. <coughs> okay. Um, so here's a question that uh, got us thinking about what I'm going to talk about today. So question. Um, um, I give you a finite index subgroup of alt a gamma. Does it have finite abelianization? Um, um, I mean, I, I don't know. That's a compact way. I mean. Um,
I mean, another way of saying it is, uh, can it subject to Z? That's another way of saying it, okay? So can I find a finite index subgroup that subjects onto Z? Do you want to do zero, or do you want to just do finite? Ah, uh, that's cohomology. Oh, cohomology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so a, a warning is that I mean this is a this is a generalization of a problem that's rock hard, okay? So this is a, this is hard. It's a, a big open problem uh, for alt fn not known uh, and for the mapping class group not known. It's not even known as a resistance vector. No, no, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So. In GLNZ, uh, they all have finite abelianization because of the con congruence of group property or something like that, yeah. Uh, I think so, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think actually for, for n equals three, something is known. I don't know what is known, but yeah, something is known. Um, <coughs> so the upshot is that sometimes not. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, if you, if you have. So yeah, a more general question is, do they have property T? Does, does the group have property T? Yeah. <coughs> yeah. So if, if you have property T, then you have finite abelianization. So, yeah. <coughs> Very good. Um, so the upshot, again, is that sometimes not. There are examples of graphs for which you can find explicit finite index subgroups that subject onto Z. And in some other cases, for some classes of finite index subgroups, this is true. So this is what I'm going to talk about now. I'm going to give some conditions on the graph that ensure that either a certain class of finite index subgroups has this property, and I'm going to say something about what happens when it doesn't have those properties. So I'm going to find, we're going to find examples of graphs for which uh, this is not true. So, so results, okay? So recall, oh. recall that uh, V less than or equal to W means that everything that is adjacent to V is also adjacent to W. And, and write, uh, do I need this now? Uh, yeah, I do. I write, uh, write u equivalent to v to mean that u is less than or equal to v and v less than or equal to u. Okay, so let's see an example of that. Um, uh, so example. Um, okay, kind of easy example. So if gamma is totally disconnected, so no edges, or uh, complete, so meaning every possible edge is there, then uh, u then u uh, equivalent to v for all uv. Okay, so let's see something less obvious. So let's, so this is v, uh, Four. This is v1, v2, v3. So v1. Yeah, okay. I, is it because ah, oh, I see. So, so in the disconnected state, totally disconnected state, the links are empty. Yeah. Right. So v4 is less than everything else okay. because everything that is adjacent to v4 is also adjacent to the rest. Yeah. Uh, and then. V1 is less than or equal to V3 because everything that is adjacent to V1 is also adjacent to V3. 
And by symmetry, uh, we get that d1 is less than i is equivalent to d3. OK? So I mean, the conditions are going to be phrased in terms of these relations. That's why I'm talking about them. Um, OK, so, so I'm going to give you the a condition that ensures that many finite index subgroups of the group um, have finite abelianization. So this is called property B. And B is for big, big equivalence classes. So definition, property B, it's a condition on the graph. So say gamma has B if the two following things happen. One, whenever, so um, whenever I see two vertices that are not adjacent, they have to be equivalent. So this is very strong. OK, that's very strong. And the second is um, um, for all v this different from w uh, with v less than or equal to w, there is a third vertex different from the two that sits in between. Um, Um, okay, so this says non-adjacent vertices are equivalent, um, like, yeah, so not like that, for instance. So OTFN, uh, um, th the disconnected graph satisfies this. And, well, actually, uh, yeah, yeah, this is a not very interesting example of a graph that satisfies both. And then this says, whenever I see v less than or equal to w, there is a vertex that sits in between. OK? So where does that come from? Um, well, I mean, maybe. Um, Maybe, maybe let me uh, give you the result first, and then I'll tell you. Um, um, and then I tell you what, what that means. Um, so th there is, uh, so if you know what the Torelli subgroup of the mapping class group is, this is the same thing. So this is the, the Torelli subgroup of R a gamma is the, so it's called I a gamma. It is the kernel of the map from R a gamma to, so it's those, um, those automorphisms that act trivial on homology. So this group here, this is a, this is a, so this is a ZM, yeah? So, so this is a, um, yeah. So the result says, whenever you see, uh, whenever gamma satisfies that property there, for every finite index subgroup that contains the Torelli group, uh, you have finite abelianization. Um, So this is uh, uh, Conchita, yeah. Um, so suppose um, gamma has property B and um, G be a finite index subgroup containing uh, the Torelli subgroup.
then uh, H1, A gamma, no. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, just a second. Uh, so this property B, it holds, for example, for the, for the disconnected graph and for the complete graph, right? Yeah, I'm going to tell you right now, because, I mean, what, what is that? I mean, that doesn't make any sense. I'm going to tell you all the groups for which that property holds, okay? okay. I, I should say maybe first that, um, well, okay, maybe I'll say it later. So... Um, so this is an aside. So this uh, proposition uh, gamma has B that is equivalent to saying that the corresponding right angle darting group is a direct product of free and free abelian groups. But not any uh, n i not equal to two uh, bigger than uh, yeah not equal to two and a bigger than two so two is bad okay so I'd like to prove this uh, because I mean it's it's a nice exercise on what these things mean I mean y y you can you can see where the decomposition comes from. Okay, so proof. <coughs> so let me write um, for V, uh, this means the, uh, the equivalence class of the vertex V with respect to this relation, uh, which is clearly an equivalence relation. Uh, um, twiddle. Okay, so I claim, um, so maybe I write I write um, gamma sub class of V, meaning the subgraph of gamma spanned by all vertices contained in this class. Okay, so this is contained in gamma. It's a subgraph. Okay, so the first claim is that um, um, this doesn't use anything about v, uh, B or anything. Uh, claim one is that uh, this, for any vertex, this is either complete or totally disconnected. Okay, so why is that? So this is, this is, uh, what time is it? Oh dear. Um, okay, so this is, V is here. They're all equivalent inside this blob. So let's suppose I give you three vertices. And let's suppose I see an edge. Okay? So <coughs> they're all equivalent. So everything that is adjacent so because this is less than or equal to that, everything that is adjacent to this one must be also adjacent to that one. Maybe I'm saying this one and that one reversed. But <laughs> so, so link of u1, uh, oh no, no, link of u1 is contained in the star of u3, for instance. They're all equivalent. U1, U2, U3, they're all equivalent. So because this is connected to, to uh, U1, uh, it also has to be connected to U3. And so on. Okay, so whenever you see an edge, you have to see every edge. Okay? Is this clear enough? Yeah? 
So this, this is what tells you, these are the factors. The factors are, so these, these guys are the sizes of the equivalence classes with respect to twiddle, okay? Um, <coughs> now, um, now claim two um, is that if um, V is not, so if you have two different equivalence classes, then um, every vertex of gamma subclass of V is adjacent to every vertex of, uh, so it's bipartite. I don't know how to, what the name of this is. But, uh, uh, gamma W. Okay. Why is this? Suppose that you have two guys that are not connected, by, that are not adjacent. Well, B1 tells you that they have to be equivalent. But they're not because they're different equivalence classes. So claim one doesn't depend on no. what claim two Yeah, is, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it, it's, it's just saying that um, there are different equivalence classes in applying this. Um, so that tells you that this, that this decomposition is a direct product. Everything in one class commutes with everything in a different class. Okay? And then, um, and then uh, so finally, um, and this, I'm not going to say anything. I mean, it's just a, um, a, a, a you know, you, you have to convince yourself. Uh, B2 says that um, Ni is not equal to 2 and A is bigger than 2. And why is that? Because this is a condition on three vertices. And this, so if these two guys lie in a, in a factor, uh, then the third guy have to, has to live in the same factor. So, okay, so in, in any case, this is what is, you know, this is just a, uh, yeah. So, so that finishes the proof. And I should say that uh, this theorem was known, um, so remark, Uh, theorem one, known or the analog, known for uh, so first of all the mapping class group. So the mapping class group you just translate in a every finite index subgroup of the mapping class group that contains the Torelli subgroup has finite abelianization. It's quite easy in this case. But, um, so this was known by uh, McCarthy. So it's just that you subject onto GL and Z. And for odd Fn by uh, Bogopolsky and Vikentiev. So <coughs> okay, so right, so let's move away. Let's recap a little bit now that I've erased it. Yes. Sorry, say you have process between the one class <coughs> and N one to N greater by the two one classes. Mm -hmm. What's the property A? Uh, also, I mean so this right. this gives you uh, this this gives you that every equivalence class and or the right angle of the acting group is either a free group or a free abelian group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. If you have uh, several a billion factors, then uh, you just group them together. It's a so okay, you're right. I mean, yeah. So 
No, I think it's correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the sizes of the equivalence classes um, for all, for all of them. Uh, where am I? Uh, yeah. So theorem one, which I conveniently erased, says that if you have a property that it's actually two properties, then uh, uh, you have finite abelianization. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. As long as you, yeah, that's a that's a very big, that's a very restrictive condition. Yeah, containing the Torelli subgroup is huge. <coughs> so, um, so the second theorem. So uh, let me let me. Um, so notation. So now I'm going to show a finite, an explicit finite index subgroup that subjects onto Z, as long as you don't have that property there. Um, <coughs> so the, the finite index subgroup is the equivalent of the pure mapping class group, if you want. Uh, so this is, this is not my notation. It's catchy. Uh, so you remember that odd A gamma was generated by uh, graphic automorphisms, inver inversions, uh, partial conjugations, and transvections. So this is just uh, the subgroup generated by the infinite order generators. I mean, it's a bit sloppy there, what I'm writing here. It's not a free group, but uh, it's the subgroup generated by. Uh, and, uh, and so note that mad day. This is finite index in the subgroup. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a finite index subgroup. Mad day and Rick Wade, uh, not, not jointly, but separately, they proved that actually this guy contains the uh, so Torelli uh, subgroup. So it's a. Uh, it's a huge subgroup, OK? Uh, right. So, <coughs> so the second theorem is that, um, so suppose, um, so you remember there was B1 and B2. B2 said for every uh, V less than or equal to W, there is a vertex that sits in between. So suppose that gamma doesn't have that property. Then this guy subjects onto Z. And doesn't have, so Ote gamma doesn't have property T in that case. Uh, whatever property T might be, but uh, actually uh, it's what we prove is a little uh, stronger. Uh, so we prove that not B2 is the same as the matrix group or A gamma quotiented by the Torelli subgroup. Um, so this lives inside GLN. Uh, uh, does not have cash down property T. Okay. So that's a bit, but yeah. Okay. So the second line, I mean, so this follows from the existence of the compatible multi-theory, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, there's this, yeah? Oh, it's different. It, yeah, yeah. Um, <coughs> right, so, so before I carry on, um, um, oh, geez, so late. Um, let, me, let me point out very quickly and very informally some uh, differences between right angle darting groups automorphism groups of right angle darting groups and say mapping class groups or odd FN. Okay? So Brighton 
OK, I'll just say it. I won't write anything. Brightson proved that whenever ought Fn acts on a cat zero space, so that is a non-positively curved space, then every transvection, so you can define transvections there also, every transvection fixes a point. OK, so ought Fn, whenever it acts nicely on a cat zero space, then uh, transvections must fix a point. Well, for general ought a gamma, this is not true. I mean, you can, you can map. Ah, yeah, yeah. So what maps to Z, what maps to a generator is a transvection in this case. So you map the transvection to Z, and then you map it to whatever hyperbolic element of your cat zero space is, of the isometry group is, and that's it. <coughs> so he also proved, Brighton, that whenever you have a, a homomorphism from uh, odd Fn to the mapping class group of whatever, the image of a transvection must be not a Dane twist, but almost a root of a multi-twist. Okay, so here it's the same thing. I mean, you map to Z, and then you construct a, a homomorphism from this guy to the mapping class group, such that the ima image of a transvection is whatever you want. So a pseudonosov, for instance. Um, anyway, so, so it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a different situation from uh, odd Fn. Um, okay, so, so far we've um, said that if you have B1 and B2, then finite index subgroups sitting above Torelli have finite abelianization. That if you don't have B2, then this guy subjects onto Z. So what happens? Um, what happens if gamma has B2? So otherwise you know the answer, but not B1. Okay. So this is a classic. This is uh, the classic thing of asking a question and answering it yourself. Uh, so, um, so it's not clear why this is. An, uh, so the answer is that sometimes uh, you still have this. Um, so what does the theorem say? Suppose, so suppose there exists some vertex of gamma such that, um, first of all, it's, it's minimal. So v less than or equal to w implies v equal w. So it's minimal. That exists because it's, it's given. But what you want is that uh, gamma minus the star disconnects. So the star disconnects. OK? Then not this guy, but actually something slightly bigger, uh, odd 0 a gamma. So this is the same. Uh, this is uh, uh, transvections, partial conjugations, and also inversions uh, subjects onto Z. OK? So what do I say? Why do I say, um, ah, actually, um, in this particular case, you can replace A by O, which you, you can't always do. Um, so this, valid, this is valid for odd. So this is the quotient by doing an automorphism group in this particular case. Um, so why do I say, um, so let me give you an example. Um, so let's, so example, uh, so gamma is the following thing. So I take two complete graphs, so this is complete, one at least three vertices, gamma one, and same for gamma two, um, and then I join, a, I, I put a, an extra isolated vertex, W. So gamma is V 
disjoint gamma 1, disjoint gamma 2. Okay, so <coughs> um, then that graph satisfies this. W is minimal, uh, the star is not connected. Um, and you can check that, so check um, that satisfies B2 um, so that means this is the condition of a vertex sitting in between but not B1 B1 said that uh, non-adjacent vertices were equivalent well non-adjacent vertices are not equivalent yeah, because there are things that are adjacent to this guy that are not adjacent to that guy, so, okay, uh, and satisfies theorem, the hypothesis of theorem 3, okay. Um, so, four minutes, yeah? Um, yeah, okay, so let me, um, let me say some things about how to prove this. Uh, something meaning two. Um, so, proof of theorem one um, so the key, okay, the key is to understand uh, the M, M level Torelli group. So, this is the kernel uh, S, I, A, gamma, M, again, very catchy uh, notation, uh, um, which is the kernel of so you map this to automorphism of homology and then you remove, you reduce modulo uh, P, modulo M. N is the number of vertices. Okay, so finite index, uh, nice. Um, so fact one, so this modern, I mean, you have to prove it, it's a proposition or whatever. Um, well, of course, this guy um, is normally generated, so it contains the Torelli subgroup. Uh, So uh, the Torelli subgroup, and so what's in the kernel? You take a transvection, that'll map a transvection to, GL, uh, uh, to a transvection in GLM, and what will be in the kernel? An M power of that transvection. So that's a normal generating set. So first you prove that. Second, you prove that um, actually m powers of these normal generators uh, lie in the abelianization. So everything is a conjugate, uh, sorry, uh, that it, they're all conjugates. That the, you can write all of them as a conjugate, so um, as a conjugator. Um, so fact two, so it's a calculation, uh, m powers of these normal generators um, lie in the derived subgroup. So everything is a conjugator. Okay? So what does this say? This says that the abelianization of this guy, So it, the group modulo, the derived subgroup, is a finite group. Yeah. Actually, it's a finite M group. <coughs> uh, okay, just one, one second. Um, 
so and then so finish. So let's suppose that I give you um, this. This is finite index. Um, so, so let's suppose the index is m. Um, so that says that for all automorphisms, alpha to the m belongs to G. Yeah. So in particular, um, S i a gamma of m. So if you, ju you just look at what, what is the normal generators, this is contained in G. This is a subgroup of G. And so the abelianization is, is contained. And that says that G prime has finite index in G. In other words, the abelianization is finite. And then for the other subgroups here, I mean, it boils down to understanding. Uh, so for this subgroup here, it boils down to understanding what the image of this subgroup um, in GLN looks like. And then you know you work a little bit, and yeah. But I don't have time, so thank you very much. Any questions for Adrian? So uh, you said for serum two, you look at the, uh, I mean, yeah. The vision of what is my vision? Thank you, thank you. Uh, the <laughs> you look at its image in GLM. It's generated by, 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 transve by transvections. Transvection yeah, okay. it's generated by transvections. So you know what the group looks like, actually. Uh, and you know what a presentation of that subgroup looks like, uh, is. So there are three types. So it's generate, the, the image is generated by transvections. And there are three types of, there, there are three types of uh, relations. There are. The first type is a commutativity relation. And so it will be a, a subgroup of G over G, right? Yeah. A finite index subgroup or infinite index subgroup? No, I don't think so. In, infinite index subgroup. Yeah. Because it has to be right otherwise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be able to it to yeah, right. Yeah, right. Oh, okay, so then you want to write something there. Then, then, okay. then you see three types of relations. One, uh, and then can the failure of condition B2 it tells you precisely that for well-chosen generators, those, the, those genera the, the, that you don't have to care about those two relations. OK? So there is, a, that there is a transvection. So let me put it that way. This is the option. That there is a transvection whose image in GLN, in that presentation, whenever it appears uh, in some relator, it appears with exponent sum equal to 0. So that tells you that the map that sends this transvection to 1 is well defined. That's a homomorphism. And for theorem 3, it's a similar thing, but using this time day's presentation. And you arrange for the existence of a partial conjugation. This is, what exact, this is exactly what you need for the existence of a partial conjugation that maps to one, uh, you know, in a well, in a you know, homomorphic way. Um, yeah. Any other questions? Well, before we thank Javier again, uh, we 